Bordetella pertussis is another important bug which I believe we need to cover to the infinitesimal detail. Right, so this is uh, the algorithm that we've been using throughout the entire uh, bacteriology series, right? So we covered uh, gram-negative bacilli recently. Uh, we did um, curved rods, uh, including cholera, uh, cambylobacter, uh, helicobacter pylori. Uh, we also covered um, uh, diplococci, including Neisseria gonorrhea, Neisseria meningitidis, Moraxella cataralis. Okay, so uh, now we are talking about cocobacilli, right? Gram negative cocobacilli. Uh, and in this video, I said we are doing Bordetella pertussis. In the previous video, we covered the Haemophilus influenza. So uh, you can click the link on the top right corner and watch that video. Right, so uh, let's start by breaking the name Bordetella pertussis. What does this mean? Right, it's called Bordetella because it was discovered in the early 1900 uh, by two scientists named Bordet and Gango. Right, so we can all see that Bordet got the better part of it. Right, uh, pertussis means violent cough. Right, so this bug. Bordetella pertussis causes a violent cough with the name whooping cough, right? This gram-negative rod has four major virulence factors, and these virulence factors allow the bacteria to attach to the ciliated epithelial cells of the trachea and bronchi. Uh, again, those virulence factors helps the organism to to evade the host's defense system and destroy the ciliated cells, causing whooping cough. Right. So let's talk about these toxins one by one. Number one is pertussis toxin. Uh, this toxin, like many other uh, bacterial exotoxins, it is a base subunit that's bind. To the uh, target cell receptors and unlock the cell allowing the entrance of the A subunit. Just to remember, uh, B for binding, A for action, right? So the A subunit activates the membrane-bound G regulatory proteins, uh, which in turn activates adenylate cyclase, right? So adenylate cyclase is an enzyme uh, that converts ATP to cyclic AMP, right? So this results in outpouring of cyclic AMP, uh, which activates protein kinases and other intracellular second messengers. It has three observed effects, this toxin, right? Uh, number one, histamine sensitization. Number two, increase in insulin synthesis and lastly uh, it promotes the uh, production of lymphocytes and inhibition of the process of phagocytosis right so i'm going to explain how it does that so stay tuned if you are enjoying this video make sure you give it a thumbs up right thank you thank you if you've done that already uh, the second toxin is extracytoplasmic adenylate cyclase, right? So when attacking the bronchi, Bordetella pertussis throws its adenylate cyclase grenades, right? So they are swallowed by host neutrophils. I mean, the, uh, the adenylate cyclase grenades, they are swallowed by uh, host neutrophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. So the internalized adenylate cyclase then synthesizes the cyclic AMP, uh, resulting in impaired chemotaxis and impaired generation of hydrogen peroxide uh, and superoxide radical, right? So uh, these are very important in uh, destruction of bacteria, right? So if their generation are impaired, what will happen? This will weaken the host defense cells ability to phagocytose and clear the bacteria. The third virulent factor is called filamentous hemagglutinin, right, or FHA, right? This is 
very important you will see why when it comes to uh, our defense mechanism and what we do to fight this bacteria bordetella pertussis does not actually invade the body it attaches to the ciliated epithelial cells of the bronchi and then release uh, its damaging exotoxins the filamentous hemagglutinin which is more like a pili uh, a pili rod extending from its surface uh, is involved in the process of binding antibodies directed against the filamentous hemagglutinin prevent binding and therefore preventing the disease uh, which means these antibodies are protective right what does this mean it means this viral infector we can refer to it as uh, antigenic right it uh, stimulates the production of antibodies against this bacteria right okay uh, the fourth and uh, final toxin or viral infector is actually the tracheal uh, cytotoxin this toxin destroys the ciliated epithelial cells, resulting in impaired clearance of bacteria, mucus, and inflammatory exudate. Right. Uh, so the other thing uh, about this uh, tracheal cytotoxin is that it's uh, it's believed to be associated with violent cough. Okay. So let's talk about the disease itself, whooping cough. Most cases diagnosed today are in adolescents and adults with waning vaccine associated immunity. In response to the rise in pertussis cases, the US now recommends a booster vaccination for adults uh, from 19 to 64 years. Whooping cough is a highly contagious disease with transmission occurring via respiratory secretions uh, on the hands or in an aerosolized form. It is like a one week incubation period, right? And this period is followed by three stages of whooping cough. What are those stages? First stage is cataral stage. Second stage is paroxysmal stage. And the last stage is convalescent stage. So let's talk about um, these stages one by one. The cataral stage. This stage lasts from one to two weeks and is similar to an upper respiratory tract infection with low grade fevers, runny nose, sneezing, and mild cough. It is during this period that disease is, is most contagious, right? So the cataral stage is most contagious, most infectious, okay? Uh, the second stage is a bit long, and even in this video, it's going to be long as well, okay? Uh, the fever will subside, because I said the first uh, stage, the cataral stage, there will be fever, right? But now, the second stage, the fever subsides and the infected individual uh, develops characteristic best of non-productive cough. There may be 15 to 25 of these attacks per day and the person may appear normal between the events. The attacks consist of 5 to 20 forceful coughs followed by an inspiratory gasp through the narrowed glottis. This inspiration sounds like a whoop that's whooping cough. During these paroxysms of coughing, the patient can become hypoxemic and cyanotic, right? So bluish from low oxygen. The tongue may protrude, the eyes may bulge, and the neck veins may engorge. Vomiting often follows an attack. It's also known as a post to cc vomiting. Okay. This paroxysmal stage can last for a month 
or longer. The illness is more severe in young, with up to 75% infants less than 6 months of age and 40% of infants and young children more than 6 months requiring hospitalization. Infants and partially immunized, thus wearing off those with wearing off immunity, uh, children and adults may not have the typical whoop, right? So there are some there are some things which are specific for infants and adult. Infants can have cough and apnea spells, right? Uh, the period of no breathing, and adults may present with a persistent cough. In fact, as many as 20 to 30 percent of adolescents and adults with a chronic cough of greater than one week duration may have serological evidence of bordetella pertussis. Right, so examination of the white blood cells will reveal an increase in lymphocytes count with just a modest increase in the neutrophils, so it's, it is more like a viral picture. The increased number of lymphocytes seems to be one of the manifestations of the pertussis toxin. Right, about uh, like this, these coughs, right. So bordetella pertussis mm -hmm. is now a frequent cause of chronic unexplained coughs in adolescents and adults, right. So, uh in differential diagnosis, there are some causes which you need to consider, right? So other causes to exclude uh, includes asthma, post-nasal uh, drip, that's allergic rhinitis, acid reflux, uh, and the use of S inhibitors, angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors for blood pressure control. All right. Uh, the last stage is the convalescent stage, right? Uh, the attacks become less frequent over a month and the patient is no longer contagious. That's all. Okay, let's talk about diagnosis of this disease. This organism will not grow on cotton. So specimens for culture are collected from the posterior pharynx with a special swab known as calcium alginate swab. This swab is inserted into the posterior nares and the patient is then instructed to cough. The swab is then wiped on a special culture medium with potato, blood, glycerol agar, right? So this uh, medium is called bordet gengo medium, right? So in MCQs, uh, it's very easy to pick bordetella pertussis, bordet gengo medium. Right, I saw a question like this in a uh, croc exam. Uh, in most hospitals, they now use uh, like uh, the following methods for identification. Thus, uh, serological tests like ELISA and polymerase chain reaction assays. Right, okay. Uh, let's talk about treatment. Treatment is primarily supportive. Infants are hospitalized uh, to provide oxygen for suctioning of respiratory secretions, uh, respiratory isolation, because uh, this disease uh, is um, like a respiratory way of transmission, of course, and also for observation. Treatment of infected individuals with erythromycin is in the prodromal or cataral stage may ameliorate symptoms and shorten the duration of infectiousness. Later therapy during paroxysmal stage does not alter the course of illness but may decrease bacterial shedding. What about close conducts? Household conducts should also receive erythromycin. Okay, about vaccination, because I told you that we actually have a vaccine for whooping cough. The vaccine currently used in the U.S. 
is an acellular vaccine with antigens for pertussis toxin like this um, filamentous hemagglutinin, right? And one or two other antigens depending on the vaccine manufacturer. This vaccine is combined with formalin inactivated tetanus and diphtheria toxoid to form the DTAP. DTAP for diphtheria, tetanus, and acellular pertussis. Acellular pertussis, very important. Right, so uh, this vaccine is given at two months, four months, six months, and then between 15 to 18 months. And later in life, like uh, between four to six years of age, right? Okay, so this is only the first part because remember I told you that from 19 to 64, we need another booster, right? Okay, let's see. Additionally, a T-dub vaccination is recommended for all adults in the U.S. ages 19 to 64 years old to boost Waning immunity, right? So look, data for children, TDAP. You see the letters like on DAP, DAP, they are in small letters. Why? Uh, they are in small letters because lesser amount of diphtheria toxoid and acellular pertussis antigens are given as compared to that in the childhood vaccine, right? So in DTAP, uh, like the levels are higher than in T dap than in adults. Now to conclude this video, we are going to have an overview, and I always say this, and I will say it again. It's very important before we even go to class. You need to know this information when covering uh, border telepetusis, right? Uh, before I do that, I would like to tell you that if you are enjoying this video, click the like button. And if you feel like the information we are sharing is very important and useful to you, you are free to subscribe because it's absolutely free. Right. So border telepetusis is a gram-negative aerobic cocobacillus. Right. Uh, it has virulence factors like... Uh, Pertussis toxin, right? Pertussis toxin, uh, it disables uh, the G protein, which is uh, like uh, on the, it's a transmembrane, seven pass protein. I told you about it, right? Uh, it also has adenylate cyclase toxin, right? This one will increase cyclic AMP and uh, tracheal cytotoxin, right? Uh, this disease, again, has three main stages. The catarrhal stage, characterized by low-grade fevers, coryza. Uh, paroxysmal stage, which is the second stage, and long, of course. Uh, it is paroxysms of intense cough, followed by uh, inspiratory whoop, that's whooping cough, uh, and post um vomiting. The last stage, the convalescent stage, uh, is gradual recovery of chronic cough. We can prevent this disease using the two main vaccines, TDAP and DTAP. For treatment, we mainly use macrolides, and if the patient is allergic to macrolides, we use uh, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. Thank you so much. Uh, if you get the opportunity to donate even at least a dollar, I will appreciate that. Uh, in the video description, you will see uh, a link to my PayPal. Every dollar counts. Until next time. Ta-da!